Hello, here is a demo on how developers can be fully autonomous when using VCF private cloud. By fully autonomous, I mean developers can freely manage their compute, storage, network, and security for their apps. So here is a slide highlighting all the network virtualization benefits. But this demo will focus only on one of them, which is simplicity and self-service with multi-tenancy and VPC. Just before starting uh, the demo, let's spend a couple of minutes on explaining what is VPC in VCF. So you have in any data center a physical fabric represented here at the top of the rack, physical router, but of course in your physical data center, you have many uh, routers and switches, physical, and you have the network and security admin in charge of that, as well as the logical networks. So here I'm showing the logical router uh, north-south, which is uh, VCF NSX tier zero in charge of the communication between the physical and the logical world. And of course the network and security admin is in charge of that as well. And the network and security admin is also in charge of providing block of IP addresses, range of IP addresses for any VPC, any future virtual private cloud. And on top of defining those IP blocks is also in charge of defining the north-south security, what is allowed for the north-south communication from physical to virtual or from virtual to physical, as well as the east-west security within the future VPC, what is allowed within a VPC in terms of traffic. So the network and security admin has full control of this. Then there is another person there, which is the project admin, could be the same as the network and security admin, also called as the tenant admin. And this one is the person that will create the VPC. So it will create a VPC for an application or for a group of people. And this internally creates a logical router that has connectivity to the North House logical router. And then the third persona is the VPC admin or the tenant developer, which is now fully autonomous in his VPC to create one or multiple networks, multiple subnets. It doesn't choose what IP subnet uh, to use, those come from the network and security admin block we talked about before. So, but he's free to deploy as many subnets he want. And he's in charge also to deploy the workloads so the different VMs uh, as he's been doing for, for years uh, on those self-created networks. And on top of it, if he wants to, he can also add some security distributed firewalling for his applications. Of course, if he allows some traffic that is not overall allowed by the network and security admin, this one won't be allowed. It's just a subset of what is allowed from the network and security admin. So with this, you understand now how the VPC admin or the tenant developer is fully autonomous, including the network and security, not only the compute and storage, but including the network and security creation and management. Okay, so you have a good understanding of the VPC. So what will be my demo? My demo is an environment where I have already one VPC, uh, VPC Finance, with an application already deployed by the developer one. So we'll look at it um, from the overall network and security admin, as well as the developer one. And the demo will follow up with the full creation of a new VPC marketing by the network and security admin that will be followed by the developer, developer 2 that will create its own application with network security, uh, compute and storage uh, in a fully autonomous way. Okay, so let's see this in action now. Here is my VCF lab and I'm currently connected to my SDDC manager as administrator. And you can see I have two workload domains, a management one and a VI one. And if I go to my VI workload domain, 
compute component you can see on the vCenter I have a bunch of VMs for different applications I actually created a dedicated folder for my application finance okay and I have a bunch of networks uh, used for each of those different applications but here you can see instead of having all the networks under my VDS I have for the project finance all the networks inside uh, vCenter network folder so that's great because as administrator I have a hierarchical view that helps me to see all the networks for each of the different applications deployed inside this um, vCenter and it also gives me the ability to create permissions now on the folders of the project VPC finance so here for instance my active directory group dev, group dev finance has the ability to see and consume uh, all the networks underneath the same as I've done for years if I create a VM folder I can associate an AD uh, group so if I do this access um, to my vCenter as developer one you can see that developer one does see only the VMs belonging to him that's all the VMs that are in the VM finance folder and can see only the networks and consume the networks inside that vCenter network folder which is my project VPC uh, folder okay so pretty uh, pretty nice now if we go on the network piece I go back to my SDDC manager I go to the network and security components so NSX and you can see under network topology I have currently one logical router north south uh, fully highly available with multiple paths to go to the physical world so great for scale great for high availability and a couple of uh, logical networks underneath and I just want to highlight one of them the VPC finance uh, network topology underneath which comes from a project project finance as you can see as an administrator if I go under the project finance I can see the VPC and its configuration but this configuration actually was not done by the administrator himself or herself it was done by a user all the users Active Directory users that are part of the AD Group Dev Finance. So if I go in this browser and log directly on NSX, this time as Developer One, you can see Developer One has access only to that VPC, and on that VPC, he has full autonomy to edit and create network those were already created um, a public network um, private network for the DB application a public network for the web uh, front end and so he created that on his own so full autonomy for the network piece full autonomy for the compute and storage piece through vCenter and at the end of that he was fully autonomous to deploy the entire application compute net compute storage network to deploy this uh, basic two-tier application front-end web talking to the DB uh, backend and now for the security piece is also fully autonomous he created developer one finance developer one the rules he needs so for instance he allowed uh, from anybody to the web tier HTTP, HTTPS and ICMP protocols from the web tier to the DB tier MySQL and anything else was rejected and that's why the application is working perfectly now if uh, for whatever reason it wants to block or reject MySQL from web tier to DB tier again logged in as developer one 
now the application does the front end application does not have access to the back end TV. If he re enables it, re allows it, again in a fully autonomous way, here we go, it's um, fully working again, even the web to the DB tier, as you can see here. Okay, this ends the first part of the demo that shows how we can, with VCF 5.2.1, offer full autonomy to developers to deploy their entire application, compute, storage, network, and security. Now let's go back, let's go to part number two. So in this part two, we want the developer two to be fully autonomous to deploy the new marketing application. So for that, I will start with Active Directory. I have my developer two user and I want to create a new group market dev marketing. So I could do that uh, through the UI and associate developer two in it, but to avoid any typo and go slightly faster, let's do it via API. Here we go, oh, via yeah, script. And so as you can see now, if I refresh, I have the group developer marketing and the member developer two inside, perfect. So the next step is on NSX to create the project VPC marketing. So same thing, I could use the UI, create a project marketing, associate a north-south logical router tier zero, and associate the IP block I want the developer two to consume for his networks and associate that user. So in 20, 30 click, it could be done, but to avoid any typo and go slightly faster, I have a script for that. Here we go. So now if we refresh, I have on NSX, I have the project marketing with inside a VPC that was configured with the user's uh, group AD, group dev marketing, perfect. So it is done and because this is done directly in vCenter, I have now the folder marketing with the VPC marketing that is available. And <clears throat> if I associate permission to it, like uh, the AD, group dev, then automatically only uh, developer two will be able to consume and, and see those networks. And for the VM side, I could also create a new folder VM like this. So, and associate only the AD group in it. So only developer two will be able to consume it. So I could do that in maybe 15 clicks, but to avoid any typo, I have also a script for that. And here we go, it's done. So let's see what has been done. I have the folder marketing with the AD group uh, associated to it. And here I have the AD group associated to this one. So perfect. Now the work is done as an administrator and the developer two is now fully autonomous to uh, deploy his application. So let's do this. Let's open another browser and let's go on the network component as developer2. And developer2 has access only to the VPC, but the, even in edit mode, there is no network created yet. So he will create one. Let's call it web. It's a public network he needs so people from the outside world can access uh, this new marketing application it's a very basic application one network actually one vm is needed only done the network is done so if he goes now to vcenter as developer 2 he has visibility only to his VMs. He doesn't see the other VMs. He sees his folder, perfect. And he sees 
his network web. He created Developer2 uh, himself. So now if he deploys a VM in it, let's go quick. New virtual machine, okay. Storage. And network, he does see only web. Perfect, next, next. Here we go, the new VM is installed. Now let's do a fast forward. Uh, when the VM operating system is installed, where the application inside is installed. So the application is fully deployed and available, and then we'll add security. Here we go. I have my application running on this server. If I access it at http colon slash here we go, marketing.php. Here we go, it's a very basic application, as I said, but the application has been deployed, so compute storage network solely from the developer too, with no action whatsoever from the NSX admin, nor the physical router admin, now the application is reachable from the outside. And on top of it, if the developer too wants to add some security, for instance, he wants to uh, allow only HTTPS. Here we go. And everything else, um, everything else, deny so all the vms that developer 2 created anybody can talk on https to them but nothing else publish now this on http is spinning and doesn't work but if i do https here we go application is working again but now only on https Okay, this ends the demo, and now let's do a quick wrap-up. So here is a quick wrap-up to conclude that demo. As you all know, VCF offers a private cloud, so virtualized compute, storage, network, and security for on-prem data centers. And network virtualization is a key component of any cloud, and in the specific case of VCF private cloud, it brings all those benefits, but this demo highlighted a new announcement of VCF 421 on multi-tenancy and VPC, where now, thanks to hierarchical network view by Project VPC in the VCF compute component, vCenter, this gives a key, quick and easy access to network and can provide effortless are back also for the network component as well as the compute storage that has been there uh, for years and now vcf offers true multi-tenancy for all the cloud services compute storage network and security thanks for watching and hope to see you soon